All right, guys, we got a lot to cover, uh, so I think we should just jump right into this. Um, my name is Keith Basil. I'm the one who got all the distro names right in the, uh, the answer. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, I'm a product manager for Red Hat. I'm on the OpenStack product manager team. Um, my focus is on kind of futuristic strategic things like Triple O, uh, Sahara, things like that. Uh, some of my uh, teammates are here. I'm giving a shout out to Matt and to Sean Cohen in the back. Um, so this session is about uh, considering uh, the concepts of using Triple O as a platform for infrastructure management within OpenStack. Uh, some really cool things, so we'll just get started. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a Virginia hair scrambler. Uh, raise your hand if you guys know what that means. <laughs> you guys don't count. <laughs> <laughs> they already know me, right? Uh, so I, I basically race dirt bikes in the woods with some crazy other guys on weekends, and it's a blast. Uh, I play chess, so if anybody wants to play a game, just hook me, you know, t talk to me. Uh, I work for Red Hat, obviously. Uh, before that, I was with Cloud Scaling. Uh, I was the cloud guy at Time Warner Cable, uh, software as a service stuff. I did a lot of cool stuff in the federal space inside the DC metro area. Um, I took a cloud architecture through FISMA moderate um, certification involved with Cisco and a couple of startups. So you can find me on Skype, Twitter, GitHub, IRC, in life as no sleep, N-O-S-L-Z-Z-P. All right. So here's the agenda. Um, how many people here know uh, Triple O very well? Very, okay, excellent. This is going to be a great talk for you then. So I'm going to set context and go through what Triple O is. Um, you know, we're going to ease into it and then we're going to drop into a little bit of detail. And then we're going to talk about looking at Triple O as a management platform, and then show some examples of work that's being done today in the context of Triple O as a management platform. So here we go. So uh, about a year ago at Red Hat, um, I put together a plan to tackle um, not just OpenStack deployment, but OpenStack management as well. There are a lot of tools to do deployment, but there's three phases that I consider very important for the cloud operator. So you sit down with the business person, you decide how many cores, what's the return on investment, et cetera. So that's kind of the planning phase. Out of that comes, let's say, a, a bill of materials, you know, network architecture, et cetera. Then you actually have tools to facilitate the deployment. And then the big thing is, most people just stand up the cloud, but then when OpenStack is up and running, it, you know, how is it doing, right? There were no, really, no real tools to answer the question, how's my cloud doing today? Um, in, internally, we have a persona my manager came up with this great name. It's called Mr. Coffee Cup. It's the guy who comes to work every day, sits down with his coffee cup and says, boom, how's my cloud doing? There was no tools to solve for his persona. So this is very much in line with that. Okay, so our goal to recap is that we want to facilitate planning, we want to do deployment, um, and we want to do operations and management. The last bullet point here is the most important one as it relates to this talk, because it talks about visualizing capacity, looking at metrics, doing instrumentation on your hardware, et cetera. So uh, this is a great slide. Um, this is a shout out to, to my wife and my son. Um, they'll come home and they'll hear me on the call and they, and they do imitation of me and they go, blah, 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 cloud, blah, 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 open stack, blah, 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 salamina, right? Um, and they just walk around the house, blah, 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 cloud. <laughs> so uh, the takeaway is that this is very complex stuff, right? This is the Solania Ken Peppel diagram in the background and it just shows a lot of complexity with open stack. So um, I bring that up because most of the deployment tools are all about solving the complexity part in terms of deployment. So on the left there, you'll see some open source tools. You'll see Foreman, which is what Red Hat uses today for uh, deployment. You'll see Packstack, Cobbler, or if you have enough skills in-house, you can kind of roll your own solution in terms of do it yourself. Or you can go with something commercially supported on the right-hand side. You know, you got you know, cloud scaling, um, Piston, all the guys on the right you know, that you can get a distro from, right? So the, the takeaway here is that this is a very fragmented landscape, right? And the main focus of all of these tools is just about deployment. So again, once you stand up a cloud, what's next, okay? So where's the love? We've got 16,000 community members, 138 countries, but wait, what about the operators? Nah, who cares? Just plus one my code, right? So um, the, the developers here are having a field day, but at the bottom, you've got these lonely cloud operators who have no love at all, right? 
Uh, everybody's just like, yeah, let's add this feature, add this feature, but nobody really considers the operational impact or aspect of OpenStack. Uh, the first day here at the session, I wore a um, T-shirt that says um, OpenStack super user, and we got that from the uh, meetup in, in Sunnyvale. It was a, a mini summit for operators, and a lot of good things came out of that. So what you see here in the conference is a reflection of a drive to shift more attention to the actual cloud, cloud operators. Okay, so our cloud operators need love too. Um, this is a famous picture on the internet. I modified it a bit. I branded the magical unicorn OpenStack, and uh, the, the cat is our hero. He's got the operator bandana on, okay? So this is our new persona. These are the guys we're solving for. The guys that are running OpenStack every day are superheroes, right? All right. Okay, so triple O for infrastructure. So if you look at it from a high level, these are some things that we want to provide to Mr. Coffee Cup or to the cat on the unicorn. Uh, we want to give this person a dashboard. We want to help them in terms of capacity planning, resource modeling. So when the CIO says, hey, um, do we need to expand our cloud? Absolutely, we're going to need X number of compute nodes, we're going to need another petabyte of object storage. You know, to be able to answer those questions, that's what we want, want to have, right? We actually want to still um, facilitate the, um, the deployment and provisioning, and we want to visualize our cloud, the status of our cloud, stat status of core services, you know, what's the rack doing, what's our class of uh, general compute doing, et cetera. So um, you can see at the bottom some sample, you know, mock-ups of dashboards. So, all right, we're going to jump right into it and explain to you guys what Triple O is. So um, Triple O is OpenStack on OpenStack. And for those who understand Triple O, you can probably appreciate a word cloud describing a cloud that deploys a cloud. <laughs> All right. Um, but let's ignore that for now. Okay. We're not going to go into the matrix right now. Okay. So basically, if you, if you can imagine, just a simple um, deployment and management application. Okay. So it's just an application that deploys OpenStack. So that's, if you think about that, you'll, you'll go a long way. And this application features you know, deploying to bare metal. It's a community adopted process. Um, we want to do the uh, visualization that we talked about earlier. And I think the most important takeaway here, uh, too, is that one, it's cloud operator focused. So we're trying to give the operator some love. And then second, um, it's extensible. And because it's using OpenStack, we get all the goodness of scalability and resiliency in terms of uh, having a management infrastructure. So it sounds cool, right? So uh, let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. All right, before we go into detail, we're going to do a 30-second recap of OpenStack, and you'll see why this plays into uh, the thing here. All right, so OpenStack in a minute or so. All right, so we have some components on the screen here. Again, in the traditional OpenStack use case, these services are used to manage virtual infrastructure. Okay, I'm going to talk about three, every other one here, because those are the ones that kind of relate to Triple O. Um, more importantly, okay? So this is only a subset of OpenStack. So Nova provides the command and control services, right? It renders and orchestrates the, orchestrates the rendering of virtual machines. Um, Heat provides application orchestration, so you define a Heat template, you carve out your resources in that template, you hit deploy, and then Heat cobbles all that together and builds your application in a repeatable fashion over again, right? But it's, again, targeted toward the virtual infrastructure. And then finally here, we've got Solometer. Solometer uh, is, used to capture usage data for the VMs, right? So you can do build back, charge back for your customers. Um, so that's really light touch of OpenStack. Most of the guys here, I mean, this is OpenStack Summit, right? So you should, you should know that. Um, so now let's talk about Triple O and, re and look at the same components, but in the Triple O context. So the concept of Triple O is to reuse existing OpenStack components, but instead of targeting virtual infrastructure, we're actually going to target the underlying hardware, the physical infrastructure uh, for managing the cloud, okay? So it talks to bare metal, so you have to change your, shift your mind and shift your thinking and look at each one of these in, in the nuance of how do we use this targeted toward hardware, all right? So Nova, same role, command and control. You guys don't have to take pictures, there's a QR code at the end, you can download this stuff right after the, right after the uh, slide, high res PDF, okay? Um, so Nova provides command and control services, just like it does. It, uh, it orchestrates the rendering of virtual machines. But instead of spinning up on KVM, now we're going to facilitate spinning up on bare metal. So it's going to use things like I, I pay my Pixie for that. So today, um, Nova, 
uh, has what's called bare metal drivers that speak IPMI and Pixie. So it's like a layer of abstraction um, for, it, for the hypervisor. So Nova treats um, the bare metal drivers as kind of a special hypervisor and deploys to bare metal. In the future, it will be totally 100% ironic. So um, I'm probably, there me be some ironic guys here in the room, but ironic is a new service within OpenStack that's designed to talk to bare metal. And that's where all the driver support, all the nuances, you know, ILO versus drag versus IPMI, all of that will be baked into ironic going forward, okay? All right, so the next thing is heat. Heat is a very interesting use case when you look at it toward hardware. In our mind, uh, this is kind of a Red Hat view, we see heat as, des as describing racks of gear or resources. So it's like um, a mini reference architecture for hardware. So if we have a rack of compute, we can say uh, this compute rack is going to serve our M1 class of hardware, I mean service for the production cloud, and these are the images we're going to run. Here's the IP addressing for that rack, et cetera. And that gives us uh, a definition that we can repeat throughout the cloud in a, in a repeatable fashion. So very powerful use case here uh, with heat. And then finally, uh, we have Solometer here. So instead of doing VM um, stats, we're actually looking at the hardware. Uh, so you know, network I.O. for the hardware, um, maybe some special agent that checks the, um, the amount of memory that's running on the compute node, et cetera. So there's a lot of things that we can do here in terms of uh, instrumentation of the actual hardware. Okay, I'm gonna talk about Tuscar, which is a subcomponent of Triple O. It was introduced by Red Hat. And right now, Tusker provides um, deployment management services. Uh, what that means is that we created um, an API for you to orchestrate your deployment of OpenStack. There is a, a user interface, which is built on top of Horizon, okay? Um, there's uh, the CLI, and then there's an API that you can call. Um, in the background, you can barely see it, but there's some code there, uh, command line script to actually deploy a cloud. I mean, you run that command, it just goes and builds your cloud, okay? Really powerful stuff. We follow the same reuse model as Triple O in the sense that uh, we're re reusing Horizon and re reusing Solometer uh, to facilitate the uh, infrastructure stuff. Okay, so Triple O, it's an open stack program. Um, its title is called Deployment, and the focus is on, Tusker's focus, rather, is on infrastructure management. Triple O was started by HP, and the goal for that was uh, CI, CD, and we've kind of looked at that and says, hey, this would be a good vehicle for actual infrastructure deployment for, for OpenStack. And then we saw some gaps in terms of Mr. Coffee Cup or you know, the cat on the unicorn in terms of the operator, so we introduced these things to help facilitate the visualization, the automatic deployment, the API, et cetera. Um, and this is an email last year from Robert Collins saying that uh, we've merged the triple O code into, sorry, We've merged the Tusker code into Triple O. So it, we're all one big happy family at this point. All right, so let's talk about the deployment flow. So you've, you've kind of been baptized into Triple O a little bit. So let's actually walk through some, uh, what this looks like in terms of deployment. Okay, remember this? A simple application that deploys OpenStack, okay? All right. So before we go there, I want you to understand that there's these key concept here. We have two clouds, okay? In, inside this black box is OpenStack, okay? I didn't want to call out the detail because it's kind of overwhelming, but this is really OpenStack in a box, okay? That's cloud number one. That cloud deploys what we call the production cloud. So that's your, the one that the tenants will see. So the production cloud is the one you know and love, it's the one that your tenants will use. If you're talking to an engineer, you go to a design summit, they're gonna call it the overcloud, okay? In the same fashion, the bottom um, cloud, uh, is what we call the deployment and management application, or the command and control cloud, the one that only the operator will see, okay? Now remember, that's, everything in that box is OpenStack, so there's Horizon, Glance, Nova, et cetera. All right, and we call this, uh, from an engineering point of view, the undercloud. So now, let's, let's walk through what, the deployment process. Now, our goal here is to have a operational cloud, right? So the red boxes there are management nodes. So these are the, the, the three instances of triple O, okay? Your command and control cloud. And they're gonna deploy to the white boxes on the screen. So the first thing you do 
is you install Triple O onto one of these management nodes. You can start off with just one, um, but uh, the last design summit or the mini summit in Sunnyvale, Robert Collins had recommended that we do three for redundancy, right? So you can go one to three or to whatever number you need based on the size of your, your cloud. Second piece here is that once that's up and running, you log into Horizon as the operator. Again, command and control cloud. So the operator then uh, defines the controller rack, defines your resource racks. So the second rack over could be block storage, third rack could be object storage, the last rack could be compute, or whatever your business requirement is for OpenStack. So you define those. And then once you define those, you basically hit the deploy button. And then what happens is Tuscar collects all the data that you've used to define the cloud, builds a heat template, triggers that heat template for deployment. Heat then um, calls Nova to actually facilitate the images being deployed on the, the resource nodes in the cloud. And Nova talks to Ironic, which talks to the hardware. Okay, it's a little complicated, but it, it works. And it's actually pretty good. We had an early demo of this running at, in Hong Kong um, based on the Nova bare metal drivers. We had a rack of Quanta gear, and we were doing full uh, rack deployments in about 15 minutes. Uh, the good thing about Triple O is that it embraces uh, the golden image uh, or image-based deployment model that Robert uh, presented. And because of that, you can deploy a cloud very fast. Um, I mean, they were saying, I think, about six minutes per node. Um, and, they, and they can happen in parallel, by the way. So good stuff. Okay, so now we're, you guys have kind of level set on Triple O. Let's talk about Triple O as management. So I want to make some changes. So instead of an OpenStack application, or app management application, I want to change this to a platform. So uh, again, Triple O was introduced by HP. We it, Red Hat added the Tusker part. Um, it was focused on deployment, but why stop there, right? So let's look at this expanding the scope of Triple O. Um, inside that box was OpenStack. So we already have components to use. They're already there. The APIs are well, well known. We're not changing the APIs. We're talking to Heat. We're talking to Nova. We're talking to Glance, we're talking to Neutron, just as before, we're just focused on a different area. Uh, the operations focus is very strong here, very natural. And I think the best takeaway here is that the community can look at this as an open platform that's distro agnostic, that can be extended um, as you see fit, okay? So we think this is a great platform for ongoing operations, obviously, and we think that because of that easy button that is now introduced, we can make the adoption of OpenStack uh, increase tremendously. And I grabbed this last uh, graph here off of the, uh, the recent survey that Tim Bell's group did, and a couple things here kind of resonate with this model where avoiding vendor lock-in for your management platform, uh, cost savings, the open technology. I saw a few other sessions yesterday where the people were naturally gravitating toward OpenStack as a standard set of APIs and using those APIs to actually control other IT resources in the organization. So this is a very natural fit here for that as well. Okay, so we have some vendor FAQs. There are a lot of OpenStack vendors in this room. I've talked to quite a few of you guys. And the question is, what does this mean if you're a compute vendor? What does this mean if you're a service monitoring or a security vendor or a network vendor? What's the context here for, open, for Triple O? Well, we see a few integration points. Now, remember, everything you see uh, on the right is standard um, OpenStack. I mean, it's not everything, but, uh, but it also introduces Ironic. So for, dash, for the dashboard, it's Horizon. So if you can create a Django application, you can now show visually you know, whatever the value add you want to roll up into uh, for the operator. This deployment orchestration is based on heat. Sorry. Um, so within uh, Tuscar, which talks to heat, there is this concept of roles, services, and elements. So a role would be a compute node or a block storage node. So within a compute node, a service could be Nova API, the metadata service, et cetera. And then you can go down further and build elements. So the deployment orchestration basically lets you take these as Lego blocks and put together these things as roles. That translates to a heat template and you click deploy. So the reason that's important is because if you have a service that you want to introduce to this platform, you could just create a role called service monitoring and then uh, bring your, your application into Glance as, a, as an appliance, right? And then just build out your heat template and off you go. It would deploy it and, and you're pretty good to go there. Uh, if you're a hardware guy, you might care about the bare metal drivers. 
Uh, and then there's some supporting components. So for example, uh, we have a profile for NetApp. When you bring NetApp hardware online, it's sitting there in the rack, but there's no awareness of the new capacity in the overcloud, in the production cloud. So you might have to do some scheduling modifications or tell the overcloud that, hey, there's a new set of block storage that could be consumed for the cloud. So there's some supporting components that you should consider as well. This is a little uh, matrix that I put together. So in the middle, you have hardware vendors. Um, they would care about the operator dashboard. They would care about bare metal drivers. Uh, they care about instrumentation in terms of getting stats on how their hardware is doing. Um, they want to do the orchestration for automatic deployment. And then depending on the resource, they may need to inform the scheduler. For block storage, for compute, they would inform uh, Nova and Cinder uh, respectively that, hey, there's new resources that can be consumed. And then software vendors, it depends. Um, if you take the case of maybe a security company, uh, they would definitely probably want to have something visually inside the dashboard. Do they care about bare metal? Probably not. Um, instrumentation? Maybe. Um, maybe they're, but it's kind of a special case in security because a lot of security guys are looking for integrity checking, compliance, and I'm not sure there's an instrument play, inter, instrumentation play there unless they're actually packet sniffing and, sorry, I'm going into my federal stuff, <laughs> um, packet sniffing and trying to check for additional vectors that may be affecting the infrastructure. So it could be, it, it's possible. Um, but you see the idea here. Uh, this gives you some ideas to, to, get, to think about uh, where and how you can integrate with Triple O. Okay, so we're gonna walk through some profiles. So this is a warning, we'll take, um, you got it? All right, you sure? All right, so back to the show. Everything you see here, no promises, no roadmap, no availability announcements. This is what could be sketches only to illustrate possibility, okay? So for all the analysts in the room, <laughs> ignore everything you're about to see. All right, so this is a profile for NetApp. So we're, we're working with NetApp um, to do some early work with Triple O integration for their product line. They have two products, product families. One's called the E-Series, which is more commoditized block storage boxes. And then they have the more advanced uh, FAS boxes. Um, so uh, let's, I'll run down the list and then talk about the profile for each one. So NetApp's very good at showing a cloud operator what their gear is doing, right? The value there. So storage utilization, efficiency ratios, you know, reserve capacity, all of this is something that they do very well today. Um, you know, benefits of cloning, dedupe, snapshots, so you can actually get a global view of the cloud based on this particular resource. I put the rack over there because we can, as earlier I said, uh, a heat template could be like a logical representation of a, a rack elevation. So this could kind of describe everything that's gonna be deployed in that rack that's based on the NetApp gear. So integration points would be heat for the rack elevation and cobbling together some things. Solometer for instrumentation. So right now we're talking about doing instrumentation of their hardware based on SNMP and actually talking to their APIs directly. So there's some translation going on there. And then for Ironic, uh, I think that Ironic would only be a good play for the E-Series boxes because those are the ones that are you know, more commoditized. Um, it was explained to me that the fast boxes are um, very advanced and it's not something that you want to have Ironic reprovisioning you know, over and over again. I mean, imagine a petabyte of data and people actually using that data. That's not something that you want to tinker with on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that in mind, we're going to look at using heat to orchestrate carving out virtual um, storage area networks, or virtual volumes rather, and then presenting that, those virtual volumes to uh, Cinder for block storage in the cloud. And that's, that's like the best of both worlds, and it's actually easier for us to do the integration on. And then what you see on the screen, this is a mock-up uh, from their existing visualization tools, but we can, we can work on moving that stuff over to Horizon so they're just one unified interface for the cloud for Mr. Coffee Cup. Um, we're also talking to Dell about uh, doing cool things with their hardware. So um, today, Ironic is focused on IPMI. Uh, there's some other drivers like C-Micro drivers are up, um, upstream. But we're going to try to work with these guys to bring Drac support for hardware and do orchestration of the firmware. So hardware is notoriously complex. Um, Seth and I lived through some things with a really big install where the BIOS drivers that on the machines were just too fresh off the assembly line and machines would just randomly turn themselves off. Um, it was actually a good use case for our, our network redundancy <laughs> um, in the cloud in general, you know, cattle. The cattle model actually absolutely works. Um,
But <laughs> orchestrating firmware, BIOS, RAID configuration, uh, we see a lot of that as kind of a pre-configuration heat template process where you, you boot a RAM disk, you do configuration, you boot it again, et cetera, till you get to the state that you want, and then it's ready for deployment. So integration areas here, uh, Horizon, uh, we want to bring the uh, console into Horizon so you can actually drill down to a machine and get console on the hardware. Uh, ironic, solometer for um, uh, instrumentation and heat to, again, describe a rack of Dell gear to meet a certain resource. <coughs> and private core. Uh, private core, these guys are here, um, here at the summit. Uh, very cool security company. Um, Oded, uh, one of the founders of private core, was talking to me yesterday, and he mentioned this concept that I wrote down, and it's privacy of computation, okay? What this means is that these guys basically have software that will make sure that the memory space, the you know, trusted boot, everything from hardware all the way up to the VM is secure, trusted, and private to you as a tenant within OpenStack. So these are the things that um, we'll, we'll be talking to these guys about bringing to, uh, to OpenStack and Triple O specifically. They're already using Horizon today, so the use case is, is very easy to bring their Django work over into Horizon, you know, the latest version. I think this would be a great tool to help us solve bare metal to tenant use cases, where if you're going to give a, a customer a complete machine, then um, you can uh, ensure that the integrity of that box has not been compromised or that there's no um, software left over in the firmware as an attack vector going forward. Um, so the integration points here are Horizon, Ironic, Solometer, Tuscar, and then what's interesting here is the overcloud scheduling because now we can give the tenant a family of instances that are trusted. So now you can go trusted.m1, trusted.small, trusted.large, trusted.whatever, and these guys can make sure that that all falls into place. Groundwork is another company, uh, strong monitoring. They're already a Red Hat partner on the Rev side. We're talking to them about bringing what they have today over to Triple uh, O. Um, they have some cool heat maps. Um, they have the ability to take an image and then to kind of uh, image map, uh, showing my age here with image map, um, image map that image uh, to do presentation based on where you are in that image or that node. Uh, pretty cool stuff here. Um, we're working with them to possibly do some plugins upstream, uh, Glance, for their application. So you can deploy Groundworks as a VM, as a core service within OpenStack uh, for the production cloud. Um, Solometer, Tusker, and Horizon. And Solania, uh, these guys are um, some ex-cloud scaling guys who started this company. Really cool service. Um, they do monitoring, but they do it a different way. Uh, they take a look at all the OpenStack logs to do discovery. Um, and they can do things like, how's my cloud how are the core, core services doing? What's the API performance, VM spawns? So you, really cool stuff that matters to an operator at scale. And then finally, uh, you guys probably know, Red Hat acquired Ceph uh, a few weeks ago. And Ceph has a, uh, an enterprise tool called Calamari that gives you visualization of the state of the Ceph cluster. So um, Sean Cohen has been, um, kind of guiding me to think about this from a strategic point of view. And this is just a mock-up I did based on the, the Calamari uh, service where now when you deploy Ceph, you can embrace this to see exactly how your um, OSDs and such are doing within the Ceph cluster. So Triple, Triple O's momentum, uh, there's a lot of work upstream. So Red Hat's doing a lot of work on Tusker. Uh, Triple O's, uh, the HP guys are, are working on Triple O. And believe it or not, Rackspace is killing us in terms of commits on Ironic. They're doing some awesome work uh, with, with their provisioning process. So hats off to those guys. So this is something that um, is, we have a lot of momentum. We have some big names behind it. Um, it's, it's here to stay, I think. So we released uh, a tool called Instack. Um, you guys probably heard of a tool called Packstack. Packstack was kind of a proof of concept installation tool. And it was just targeted toward, it didn't do any bare metal, right? So we have this thing called Instack, which is based on Triple O and it will actually install um, everything that I just talked about in terms of the UI, so you can actually do a deployment. Uh, you can click the deploy button and it will actually take your cloud and go bare metal using RDO ISAPs today. Uh, also of note, uh, HP announced uh, Helion um, as their own distro for OpenStack and they actually use Triple O for their installation process. So again, Rackspace is, is uh, doing some great work and trying to solve for the multi-tenancy use case. Now, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, auto discovery of nodes, 
uh, needs to happen. Complex hardware, going back to the Dell, the Dell use case, um, you know, BIOS configuration, RAID configuration, um, doing all that has to be solved. And then I personally think that infrastructure awareness needs to be solved, and I think some of the guys maybe at Solania can, can help with that. Um, and there's some others. I mean, I could have made a whole list of stuff there, but this is, has momentum. We, Red Hat, uh, see this as a long-term install tool for our own product. Uh, right now we use Foreman, but going back to that, that uh, landscape of complexity and fragmentation, we want to kind of consolidate on something that's community-driven so that we can release the technical debt related to a, a, a tool that is specific to our, our distro. So with that, I'll take questions, and here's the QR code for all the uh, content. Yes, sir. You mentioned the um, undercloud, which has three nodes. Why specifically three? Why three? Yes. Uh, it's for, redundant, for resiliency. Why not two for resiliency? It could Why do you need three? It could be two. It could be one. It's up one can be resilient, but sorry, one is not resilient. So why specifically three and not two? Um, Right, so if you've got more than two, then you have the opportunity to start doing like a, a rolling tested canary style upgrade. So you can have pull one out of the three, put it up to a new release, start testing it. Is that okay? That's good. Maybe grab another machine from a, a different pool that's not being used, join that one in. Is that now working? Are they working together as a cluster? They're passing all their tests. We'll flip over to those ones. So it lets you maintain your uh, high availability on the existing one that's running while you're building a new one. Uh, you're just generally slightly more flexible in that kind of area. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Here, come to the mic. What is the status of upgrades with Triple O? What's the state of what? Upgrades, for example, from ISO to Juno, upgrade. If you have deployed ISO structure using Triple O, because yeah. it's the base structure, uh, how is the upgrade going to work? I, I, can't, I still can't hear you. OK, since uh, Triple O is an image-based deployment. Closer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to answer that? So this is uh, Hugh Brock. Uh, so I'm the product manager. I think of the ideas, and this guy actually puts them, makes them real. Hi. Uh, yeah. The question was, uh, does Triple O support upgrades, um, and and if not, when will it, and how? Uh, and the answer is the answer is is Triple O is. It, it's, it, its core mission, more or less, is to facilitate upgrades. Um, so yes, it does. It, it will support them much better in Juno once we have a whole bunch of stack update work done in Heat um, and the full, uh, a full HA implementation um, in the Heat templates. So basically, the, way it, the, the, the reason Triple O is, is focused so closely on upgrades is because its its roots are a, as a continuous deployment solution. So they want to be we want to be able to up, upgrade the cloud all the time, you know, every day, every two days, whenever. So you so it's it's absolutely critical that we be able to do that with no downtime. Um, we're not there yet because we don't have full HA on the overcloud. Because so what, ideally, what you would do is. Um, you know, say you're going to upgrade, uh, you're, you're going to upgrade Neutron, right? You want to take one, you've got three of them. You want to take one down, re-image it, bring it back up, then take the next one down, re-image it, bring it back up, and then fail over to the new, um, the new uh, service. And you do that multiple times. Now, there's work going into heat this cycle for the Juno cycle. Actually, there's a session on it right now uh, to make that process automatic. Right now, it's manual. But we feel like this is, there's a, I mean, we at Red Hat, we've cobbled together a bunch of stuff to facilitate upgrading your OpenStack cloud. We feel like the triple O solution is going to be much more robust over time.
Yes. Uh, so the question was, can we handle installing services on a mix of virtual and bare metal? Um, conceptually, yes. And the way you would do that is you'd, you'd carve out your bare metal machines. Um, they would be assigned and, and registered in um, Tuscar and Triple O. Um, and then you would also deploy uh, a hypervisor. And we were just talking about this for core services. You don't want to have a core, core services running on what well, you could on bare metal. You want to optimize the placement of everything. So that's the same use case where you could have a mixture where Triple O could target the virtual machines. Now, again, this is the undercloud. And also bare metal to get more performance for maybe your application or something specific that you need. It's possible. And that would be a really cool heat template, actually. Oh, sorry. I'll ask loud. OK. Um, so as a management platform, will this be able to form in today? You make uh, changes on form and it pushes it down. But if you make ch changes at the system, it doesn't push up into Foreman. So you've got to use Foreman exclusively to implement and manage your system down. You can't bring it back up. Will Triple O reverse that and allow you to go either CLI or GUI? Do you, so I, if I understand your question correctly, this is about configuration management? And, OK. So the default approach is image-based deployment uh, following the Robert Collins philosophy of golden images. Um, so by default, you, everything's in sync, right? Um, now, you could do a hybrid approach where you deploy an image and then have that hook into your existing chef or puppet uh, system. And I think that's probably best of both worlds at that point. Um, as far as detecting deltas on the nodes and rolling that back up, not happening. So we know cloud operators like to go out to the CLI. And, and tinker. And, and play. Yeah. And as soon as they destroy gold, it's gone. It's gone. There, there, I will say that. Um, uh, we do have we do have very solid CLI support right now with Tusker, um, so so there's no limitation on you don't have to do anything from the UI, right? Uh, if you want to you want to you want to tinker with parameters, um, redeploy, tinker again, redeploy, that all can be done from the CLI and it gets saved every time you do it. So the, you know you, whether you do a deployment from the UI or from the command line, it should be completely repeatable. Yes, sir. So I've been playing with Triple O a little bit over the last six months or so. Um, and it's great. Um, <clears throat> the paradigm that I'm seeing at the moment is you pull the Git repository, you use the build scripts to create Triple O, the dev test scripting. That creates the seed, which creates the undercloud, which creates the overcloud. Now, you mentioned that you were adding hardware into a GUI capability. And I, I was wondering, is, is, your, uh, is your plan for augmenting that process to generate the seed ahead of time and then have that provide the GUI and then you put the, the hardware in that? Or were you, like, where is the GUI that y you showed adding the hardware in to then push the cloud to? Where, where does that run in the, in the stand-up process? Gotcha. So you install the seed node, so that's the basis. Uh, you log into Horizon there, and then you register your hardware in the GUI, and that's where it's captured. So today, the hardware registration is a manual process. So if you, you know, install five racks of gear, if your vendor is a good vendor, they're going to give you an Excel spreadsheet with all the MAC addresses for that rack elevation, right? <laughs> okay, and then you would just copy and paste that into Tuscar, and then bam, there, there are your nodes, uh, and then you can assign roles to those machines. In the future, we'd like to have some kind of distributed uh, presence within the racks, or maybe uh, some awareness of, for the layer two domain, and then discover those machines, and then roll those up for presentation to the cloud operator. Yes, sir. I, I can't hear you. Seed horizon or undercloud horizon? Yeah, it's in the undercloud. Right, but that inventory that you put into the seed will get migrated to the undercloud once it's built. No, the seed is this. Let's, okay, so let's not use the word seed. It's just the undercloud. So we install the undercloud, and that's where you put your, your, that's where you register your MAC addresses. 
just I, I just want to add one more thing to that. Um, there's we have at Red Hat we built this Instack tool that bypasses the seed process. So we wh what we basically do is take a take an existing Fedora or RHEL or EL6 machine um, and run the elements on the machine to to create an undercloud. It's a sh shortcut around the seed process, which is what Upstream is using. It makes it a little bit easier for us to just install an, an undercloud and use that to deploy, if that makes sense to everybody. Yes, if, if you look at that the QR code, there's links to the, uh, the Instack tool to, to do the installation on RDO ISOs. Yes, I, th I think we're done. Thank you, guys. This has been great.